So let's have a little chat, shall we? Let's have a little occult chat. This is your host, The Occult View. I've been on a talking spree, haven't I? The first thing I want to do, I want to give some rest and pieces to some great entertainers and performers that we recently lost. I want to give a rest in pieces to Piper Laurie, the great Piper Laurie. She was, well, I think she was a singer as well, but I definitely know her as an actress. Some of you know her, or most of you may know her from the movie Carrie. She played Margaret White, the crazy religious mother of Carrie's. Piper Laurie was 91 years old, so rest in peace to the great, the late great Piper Laurie because she was a good actress. Not only did I like her in Carrie, I liked her in The Faculty. I liked her in that movie with um, another movie she played in with Sissy Spacek where they played sisters. And Nell Carter was in that movie. I think it was called The Grass Root or The, Gra the Green Grass Harp or something like that. She was good in that as well. I've seen her in shows like Touched by an Angel. Piper Laurie was the business. She was a good actress. She was the business. I, I, I like to be some Piper Laurie. I also want to give a shout out and a rest in peace to Suzanne Summers. These are people that I grew up with. You know what I mean? That, that I was entertained by. I don't care about their personal life or what they may have done. I don't care anything about that. But they had a talent. And they shared that talent with the world. Suzanne Summers passed passed away today at the age of 76 um, after a long battle with um, cancer. She was first diagnosed with cancer in the year 2000. I think she beat that. Then it came back early part of this year, I believe. And she unfortunately died from cancer at the age of 76. You know, what's interesting is, and I find interesting, is that she and Piper Laurie both are Libras. They're both Libras, and we are in Libra season. And Piper Laurie was 91 years old. She lived a long, you know, good life. And Suzanne Summers did a video. I don't know when she did it, but she did a video, and she was talking about some things about a doctor who was into holistic, um, I'm going to say holistic medicine and how she believed that he was taken out. And she began to ask questions because she was told to call someone about it or something like that. I mean, I'm telling y'all the story that I heard in the video. And she asked someone could the Central Intelligence, CIA, could they cause someone to have a massive heart attack through interesting means? Because the doctor that she was um, friends with, he had a massive heart attack all of a sudden, but he received a phone call three days prior, if I'm not mistaken, that he was going to be eliminated. And they told him he did not know how or whatever, but he was going to be eliminated. And he had a massive heart attack when he walked from his office to his home. And he had a massive heart attack in his home after he came from his, from his office, his, his practice. And she was telling this story again, I don't know when, she was telling it, but she was asking questions to someone. Could the central intelligence cause something like this to happen to someone? And whoever she was asking this question to had inside knowledge and they told her yes, basically. So that was an interesting video that I saw, but Nevertheless, I loved her as Chrissy on Three's Company. I loved her in Step by Step with uh, Patrick Duffy. She was a good actress. She was a good actress, and I'm going to miss her talent. So rest in peace to 
Suzanne Summers and Piper Laurie, and also rest in peace to all of the talented celebrities and people who brought, you know, laughter into the world and entertainment into the world. Oh, Piper Laurie was also in another movie that I liked called Return to Oz with Feruza Balk. And Feruza Balk, if you don't know her name, you know her birth name, she played the character of Nancy in The Craft. For those of us who are older, Generation X, who know about those movies back in the 90s and stuff like that, you know. But I found that to be interesting about Suzanne Summers and the allegations that were being made. And she herself did not say that she believed that she was she wasn't accusing the CIA herself. She made that clear of doing any of those things. And I'm not either, but I'm just bringing it up that this was being talked about. But, you know, it really, but, you know, just delving more into, but rest in peace to those talented actresses that passed away. But, you know, it just makes you wonder about a lot of strange things that have happened in Hollywood with certain actors and actresses, it just makes you go, hmm, I just wonder, I'm not saying yay or, or, or nay, but it just makes you wonder about a lot of things. And it also makes you wonder about a lot of people that you come in contact with in general. It can be a scary, scary world out there sometimes. And if you are not grounded spiritually, and if you're not connected to something that is of a divine nature, then a lot of times you fall prey or victim to, let's just say, the wiles of this world or the illusions of this world. Because one thing that Suzanne Summers said that this person told her is that, that they, somebody can hit you on the arm and then three days later, you can have a massive heart attack. I mean, these are the techniques that allegedly the central intelligence has at their disposal, CIA. And it just really makes you wonder about a lot of these Hollywood celebrities. It makes you wonder, what are they really involved in? Why is there so much connection with the CIA and the government? I, I, you know, it just makes you wonder. So in my spirit, in my flesh, I don't want to believe it. But in my spirit, it just makes me wonder, are all of those celebrities and people that we admire and their talent, are they really CIA operatives, operatives, CIA agents, undercover agents in place to create um, illusions and deception across the board in America? Is that why so many of the celebrities that we love, is that why they're taken out sometimes? because they're really CIA agents and they go rogue, meaning that they go against the grain. They go off of the trajectory of the plan or the goal that their officers or that the CIA, you know, um, gives them to, 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 to accomplish. It just makes you wonder because why would Suzanne Summers be talking about a doctor being taken out potentially by the CIA, allegedly. Now, this is all alleged. Why would she be saying that? It just makes you wonder. It just makes you wonder about the world that we really live in and the world that we don't get to know, the world that is, go the, the things that are going on around us that we are not aware of. So my question again are Hollywood actors really CIA agents? And I've had this, you know, I'm not going to say all of them, but could some of them really be CIA agents? I'm just wondering. And it's just, and let me be clear about something. It's just not in Hollywood. 
It's in the religious institutions. It's in the sports arenas. It's in so-called um, uh, 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 conscious circles. I'm going to say that too. Shit. Because a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of chatter that even some of, child, that even some of these so-called uh, conscious people are really not naming no names, but that, that even some of them are agents. For the CIA or the government, I've heard that. I've heard a lot of chatter about that. See, I'm gay, honey. I'm, I'm gay. We always hear what happens at the crossroads. We always hear what happens at these gateways because we're gateway entities, some of us. So we always know what's going on. We're always in the know. And it's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that a lot of people, not with me, but with other people that, and they're not even aware of it. So it just makes you wonder because there's been a lot of chatter even about the conscious community saying that a lot of these dudes came from jail and they were trained by the government to come out and mislead the black community because the black community is so thirsty for a leader and for leadership because the black community has lost its spirit. It's okay to have an elder to guide you if that's what you need. But ultimately, the leadership that you really need to be, you know, um, looking for is within yourself. That is where you find the kingdom. That is where you find God. And I'm not talking about in no religious text or no religious terms, but that is where you find God within you, your spirit. And that's what should be leading you. Not somebody, you know, that, you know, not, not, not one of these people that you don't even know. And then oftentimes when you do get led by people that you don't know, you end up in a place that you don't even want to go in the first place. So my question is, are Hollywood people really CIA agents? And is that why a lot of their lives don't go the way that they want it to? Is that why a lot of their lives are cut short? Because when you really think about it, when a lot of these people come to Hollywood, first off, they change their name. For example, let's talk about Marilyn Monroe. And I, I am a big Marilyn Monroe fan. I love me some Marilyn Monroe. But there's been some, there's been some information that I've heard, and I was shocked to hear that, but there's even some some information out there saying that Marilyn Monroe allegedly was not even really a biological female. Now, I don't now that's not a problem to me. I don't have an issue with that. But the public always looked at her as a biological woman. But there are some people that say that she really was not. I've heard that before. I've heard the same thing about Joan Crawford. Allegedly that she was not a biological woman. And suffice it to say, both Marilyn Monroe and Joan Crawford, they had horrible, um, how can I put it? They had issues bearing um, children at times. And that's not to say, just because, let me make this disclaimer, just because a woman has an issue bearing children does not make her a man. Let me be clear about that. That's not what I'm saying, of course. But I look at Joan Crawford, for example, she tried to get pregnant allegedly seven times and could not. She miscarried all of them when she was married to um, French Hotel. So it just makes you wonder. And then another thing, Joan Crawford's real name was Lucille Lasseur. That was her real birth name. I think it was Lucille. Was it Lucille Fay? I believe. I don't know. But I know Lucille Lasseur. So let's say she was, a, you know, let's say she was 
a biological female, which, you know, I, I pretty much believe she was. You know, I think some of these things are just rumors. You know, people say, you know, this and that. I mean, I think she was a biological woman. At least I think she was. Same thing with Marilyn Monroe. But you, you I mean, you never know. But Marilyn Monroe's name was Norma, Norma Jean Daltrey. Then she changed it to Marilyn Monroe when she came to Hollywood. Same thing with Joan Crawford, Lucille LeSueur. So it's not far-fetched. And I'm not saying that those two particular women were agents, but I'm just saying it just seems like a lot of people when they come to Hollywood, they do have this agent -nisk type of energy with them because they change their they change their whole persona. Marilyn Monroe was not a blonde. If I'm not mistaken, Marilyn Monroe, her hair was red. She was a redhead before she became um, a blonde. See, I was a big Marilyn Monroe fan back in the day back in the early 90s when I was exploring old-time Hollywood. You know, all of these um, unexpected, sudden deaths of celebrities that have been happening throughout the, the generations, even long before I was born. And you know, there's always been a lot of controversy surrounding Marilyn Monroe's death. Till this day, people still really don't know how she really died. Some people say she died of an overdose. Some people say she was, you know, taken out by the Kennedys. Some people say she was taken out, taken out by the mob because she knew too much. You know, very, it's, it's just interesting to me. And then when I listened to what Suzanne Summers was saying, it just took me back to all of that. So who are these people really? Do we really know who these people are? No, we don't. A lot of people don't know that right before Joan Crawford died, she was receiving phone calls and death threats. See, a lot of people don't know that. See, I research because I'm an occultist. And I know what people are saying. Well, what does this have to do with the, with the occult or spirituality? Everything is connected to the occult and spirituality. Hollywood is connected to the occult. So before Joan Crawford died, I think maybe, and this is, see, people thought that she, that she became a recluse because of her looks because her looks were fading. But no, Joan Crawford was receiving death threats and she hid herself in her apartment. She lived in the Imperial, in, what is it called? The Imperial House in Manhattan, New York. The Imperial House is some big, fancy, smancy bu building up there in uh, Manhattan, New York. And she lived in the Imperial House. That was where she lived. And she did not come out of that apartment ever again once she, once she started receiving death threats. And then she had mobility issues as well. Now, I read this in, I read this in Mommy Dearest, the book that Christina Crawford wrote about her adoptive mother. I read this in Mommy Dearest that she was receiving death threats. And I've also heard it in other places too. So my question is, why was she receiving death threats? And then did she die not long after those, de those death threats? I don't know. But it takes me back to what Suzanne Summers was saying in that video. And again, I don't know how old that video was that she did. It didn't look to be that old. It didn't look to be that old, but I, I don't know. But it just takes me back to what she was saying about the doctor that she knew and all of the shenanigans and all of the murders and sacrifices and the and the thing and the things that go on in 
Los Angeles and Hollywood, it, it just really makes you think. It just makes you think. That's all I'm saying. It makes me think, like, what is really going on in this world? What is really going on? Same thing with Anne Heche death. I mean, that was so eerie what happened to her. That was so eerie what happened to her. And we all saw it. She was trying to get out of that body bag. And we and people are just pretending like it was no big deal. No, that was a big deal. She was running away from something or someone. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you what I do know. Let me go back to Joan Crawford for a minute. Joan Crawford knew uh, Joan Crawford was a people can say what they want about her as far as a mother. Yes, she was. She was an abusive person to her children. We get that. Got it. Horrible mother. Got it. But Joan Crawford knew where a lot of the skeletons were in a lot of people's closets. Because one time, Mr. J. Edgar Hoover, the former racist FBI agent, not, I'm sorry, the former racist director of the FBI, Mr. J. Edgar Hoover, who was black, by the way, but a lot of people don't know that, but J. Edgar Hoover was black. He was a black man passing for a white man. And his black relatives, they were threatened. He threatened them and told them, you better not ever tell anyone that I am really black or else. He threatened them. I, re I researched this and I read it. And I said, that explains a lot. That explains a lot. So you mean to tell me that a lot of, see, and this is the thing. He did a lot of harmful things to black people while being a black person himself, being a whole black man himself, he did a lot of harmful things to a lot of black people, especially the civil rights movement, a lot of black people in the civil rights movement and a lot of black actors. So who are these people? Who are these people really? Do we really know them? Are they really who they say they are? Excuse me. Joan Crawford knew about J. Edgar Hoover's homosexual proclivities. She knew about that because he threatened her one time because allegedly there's a, um, well, they used to call them stag movies, but there is a pornographic movie allegedly out there of Joan Crawford. And this came, this, when did it come out? I believe Hedda Hopper, she was a former um, gossip columnist, Hedda Hopper. She was another one that knew a lot of people secrets, Hedda Hopper. How did it go? I'm trying to remember how it went. J. Edgar Hoover, okay, he threatened Joan Crawford with that tape. He said, I have a, he told her, I have a pornographic tape of you. Joan told him, destroy that tape or I will go public and tell everyone that you are a cross-dresser. You know he destroyed that tape, right? See, Joan Crawford, she knew a lot of what was going on in that industry. I remember when I watched the movie Mommy Dearest, when, um, you know, when Faye Dunaway was playing her, and in one of the scenes, she was, Joan Crawford was breaking up with, played by Faye Dunaway, of course, again, but she was breaking up with one of her boyfriends and she said to him, there isn't a dirty cover up in this entire industry that I don't know about. And your hand is in every one of them. So that let me know right there that Joan Crawford knew a lot of stuff. So it would it wouldn't be a far fetch for them to threaten her to try to silence her from not revealing their secrets. Because, see, also around this time. Also around this time, her daughter, her adoptive daughter, Christina Crawford, 
I believe she was getting ready or gearing up to write the book, Mommy Dearest. And the issue probably was a lot of people who had secrets did not know what was going to be put in it. And I have a question. Where's Christina Crawford? She has been silent for a long time. She used to pop out every now and then and she'd pop up, excuse me, she would pop up every now and then and she would do interviews and things of that nature. Where is Christina Crawford? Why hasn't anyone heard from her in so many years? Is she even still alive? Because I found it interesting that she had nothing to say about the, the, um, the television series Feud with Jessica Lange and Susan Sarandon, which depicted and told the story of the feud between Betty Davis and Joan Crawford when they were filming Whatever Happened to Baby J. That was a Ryan Murphy production. I am surprised that Christina Crawford had nothing to say about that. And Christina Crawford is also someone who knows a lot of things too, I believe. So again, who are these people? Because remember, and let me be careful saying this because you know, when I talked about this before, when I talked about this before, uh, it kind of got me in trouble here on YouTube. But remember, Christina Crawford was Ill illegally adopted from a child trafficker, Georgia Tan, if I'm not mistaken. She was there, That was an illegal ad adoption, and I believe C Christopher Crawford's adoption was illegal as well. See, all of that was under the carpet, and I'm going to tell you something. Hollywood is definitely connected, and I'm sure people already know this, Holly, from it's it's con the connection from Hollywood to DC where I'm at is very very real. That is why you see so many of these celebrities cozy up next to politicians because they're all connected. They're all connected in some way. And the ones that do not go along with the flow are the ones who end up um eliminated early on in their careers or the ones who decide to take another journey or they, they decide to go off the trajectory of whatever the goal is. You feel what I'm saying? It just makes you think and wonder what is really going on. What is really going on? And like I said yesterday, when I made that video about that awful man, who's the, Tenant Association Vice President, like I said yesterday, it's a trickle down effect because it's affecting people, your average person. It's not just Hollywood people who are walking around here as secret agents. We have them in our family, and I've talked about that before. They're all around us. And anyone who deviates from the cult. See, when we're first born, we're born into a cult. It's called family. And I know a lot of people may not like what I'm saying, but try, quite frankly, I don't give a damn. I'm speaking from my own eyes and my own experience. I'm not speaking for anyone else. I'm speaking for me. I may say we, but I'm speaking for me. So if this doesn't apply to you, then it doesn't apply to you. Just keep it moving and do what you do. OK, but for me. As I look at things now, not through the eyes of a child, see, through the eyes of a child, you know, you're always happy to be around your family, et cetera, et cetera. But as you get older. These families become more aggressive. They want to consume your time. They want to consume your energy. It is almost, in a way, it's almost, I don't want to say that word. I'm not going to say that word, but it's almost a very uncomfortable, weird feeling. They get upset if you don't answer their calls. 
Maybe you were in the bathroom. Maybe you were in the shower. They get all in their feelings because they're mad because they can't consume your energy. They can't consume your time. They expect you to be calling them every five minutes. See, this is the, this is where I say it's a cult, not the occult, which is studying hidden knowledge and ancient knowledge, but a cult being in a unverified group where someone wants to control every aspect of you in an unhealthy way and it doesn't help you. And that's what a lot of these families have become. Now again, when you're when I was younger, yeah, you wanted to be around your family because you were young and you needed guidance, you needed love, and everyone still needs love. But when you decide that you want to go off and do your own thing, then that is when they start becoming aggressive. My um, grandfather was like that. Well, my step grandfather, he was like that. He was very, very aggressive in nature. He would get an attitude if you did not want to sit on the phone with him all day, every five minutes. If, if he called you and you didn't answer the phone, you could have been in the bathroom. You could have been in the kitchen cooking. You could have went out to, you could have been at the store. This is before cell phones. When you come back and return his call, where the F you been at? Talking to grown people like that. I went to the store. Well, that lie is just as good as any. You know, they want to track your every move. Here we go with the Yahweh effect, the Antichrist effect. They want to attract you. They want to track your every move. They want to know where you're at. They don't want you to have any type of life outside of them. Parents can be that way too. Mothers, fathers, it doesn't matter. They want you to come to their cookouts, even if you don't want to come because you really don't fool with a lot of those family members that's going to be at the cookout. But they want you to sit up in misery and be uncomfortable just for the sake of family. That's a cult. That's not family. That's a cult. And a lot of us are born into these family cults because family is supposed to respect your decisions. Family is supposed to love you enough to let you go and spread your wings. And if things don't work out for you, what family is supposed to do is under normal circumstances. Now, not if you're out there doing something reckless to, that would bring harm to everybody else. But under normal circumstances, family will accept you back and they will help you get back on your feet without any judgment. But this is how I know that this is a cult. Just like I know Hollywood is a cult. Just like I know the government is a cult. The reason that I know we're operating on a cult effect is because the way family is now, and this may not be the case for all families, but the way family is now, family is like this. You do something for me, then I'll do something for you. Or it's, you do something for me and I won't do anything for you. Like what, where's the, what's the benefit in it for me to be sitting up around or sitting around or being around people that I don't like? I don't, I don't care if you are my mother's sister or my mother's brother or uh, uh, my uncle's daughter. If I don't like you, I don't like you. We've been brainwashed on every account. Not me. I'm waking up. If I don't want to be bothered, I should have the right to say that without being attacked, ridiculed, bullied, shamed, degraded. We should not have to deal with people that we don't want to deal with. But isn't that what they do in Hollywood too? They force celebrities into certain ritualistic uh, types of um, activities that they may not want to do, but they tell them you better do it because we have X, Y, and Z on you. 
What type of cult is that? And a lot of our families, they're part of this uh, 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 cult. They're part of it. They want to know what you're doing, who you're talking to, asking questions, being nosy all the time. It gets it gets uncomfortable and it gets weird. And I have to tell them a lot of times I'm a grown man. Nobody controls me. You're not going to tell me what to do. What I do in my personal private life should not interest you. I don't want to come to your cookouts all the time. If I want to come, let that be my decision. If I want to come to a fish fry, let that be my decision. But again, what is that benefiting me? I can fry fish at home if I want to. I don't even like no, I don't even like a uh, fried fish like that. Because the fish don't taste like shit nowadays. It tastes crappy, especially here in the D.C. area. And we're right here by the water here in Maryland. We're surrounded by that. We're supposed to have the best seafood, but it don't taste good. But that's another story. Then. You don't have anything for just family. You want to invite the entire upper northwest D.C. area that you know so you can showboat. But none of those people ever invite us to their house for food or cookouts. Not that I want to go anyway, but I'm just making a point. You never have anything for just the family. And I'm speaking about my family in particular. You want to have a cookout for up, Upper Northwest. You want to have a cookout for, you know, uh, uh, this, you know, all these different people. All these different energies that I really don't mesh with. Those are not my type of people to be around. But if I don't come, it's always an attitude. They get a serious attitude when I don't want to come to something. And I'm like, why? That's because they're energy ciphering. I don't give a fuck. If I don't want to go, I'm not going. And I don't make up no lies and no excuse. I'll just say, no, I don't want to come. I'm laying on my ass looking at movies, having, a, having fun. Shit. I don't want to come. But these families, we're born into this cult-like mentality. We're born, we are raised by the public school system. And this is why I do support, especially women who opt out of, or any parent who opts out of, or any parents that opt out of putting their children in the public school system and homeschooling their children. I think children that are homeschooled, I think that that is a very, very good thing for them. I really do. And I don't think parents should be shamed for homeschooling their children. I went to public schools. And let me tell you what you put up with in public schools. You put up with trauma. I was traumatized going to the public school system. I was bullied and harassed, not just by staff members, but the students, a lot of a lot of whom come from the penal system. People that I should not have been around in the first place. They mix us in with people that truthfully we should not be exchanging energies with anyway. Like it's like it's all one big experiment. I remember my first day <clears throat> at. Shaw Junior High School. For those people who live in the D.C. area, you'll know what Shaw Junior High School is and where it's at. And my first day there, I was almost in a fight. And I was threatened. Here we go with the threatening part again. 
I was threatened by this dude, this little short guy. I'll never forget his name. His name was Robert. A little short. Probably now he probably wasn't even five foot five. Might have might have been five foot three. He kept kicking the back of my chair. And I asked him, could he stop kicking my chair? Like, move your foot off of my chair, dude. What are you doing? See, I spoke up. This little motherfucker, he wanted to jump me. He wanted to get his friends to jump me. But of course they did not jump me. Of course they did not jump me. I remember at that time in the early 90s, when I was really attracted to black men, other black men at that time, you know, I was, you know, at that time, that's when I was coming into my sexual orientation. I was a teenager. And when I was really attracted to black men at that time, you know, because black men at that and in, in, in that time, 30 some years ago, it was the, the energy was was different. You know, even if it was what it was. I could still find myself attracted to them because black men at that time to me had a mystery about them, a darkness that was attractive and I liked it. Now, nothing but, I don't know, I don't know. But anyway, at that time in the early um, 90s, I am... Um, what was I getting ready to say? It'll come back to me. Oh, yeah. At that time in the early 90s, you know, people, were black dudes and black gangs, they were always trying to jump people. And I didn't know. See, there was a whole conspiracy going on against me. People have always been gunning for me. I mind my business. And a lot of those dudes, they didn't like, just like now. Just like now. Well, not now. It's I'm, I'm okay now. Nobody's bothering me now. You know, because I'm older now. You know, I don't deal with that type of stuff. But I remember there was a whole, there was a whole conspiracy. All of these black guys that I went to school with, they didn't like me because they thought that I was too uppity. They thought I was too uppity. And they wanted to jump me because they wanted me to be in their gang. Here we go with the cult mentality again. See, I went against the grain. I was not friendly with them. I barely said anything to them. I was just in school trying to do my work and go home. I wasn't thinking about those Negroes. And that bothered them. That bothered them. They did not like the fact that I wanted nothing to do with them. And it wasn't that I thought that I was better. I just didn't like them. I didn't care for them like that because of their lifestyle. And then they were spreading rumors about me, telling people that I was gay, even though I was. But I didn't I wasn't messing with no men at the time. I was only 13 years old, child. I didn't start messing with men until I became grown. This is all in the public school system. They were telling people that I was gay with some black women and black girls involved in that, too, because they 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 were dysfunctional, too. At that time, but they just weren't trying to attack me physically. Well, except one, and I cussed her out really badly and told her what I would do to her. But that's another story. I mean, these people were really rough, broken people. So I didn't know that these dudes, my, my little brother, he said to me, he said, they want to, he said, these dudes, they actually, some of this, it's a long story, but some of the guys See, my little brother, he was more of a street person where I was a homebody. 
He knew what was going on. And he told me that they were trying to jump him to get to me. I said, what? I said, what? They came to our apartment building. They came to our apartment building trying to jump me and my brother. I went out there with two big long knives and I told them motherfuckers, I said, bring it the fuck on. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I acted like a maniac. I act, I cussed all of them out. You know, ain't near one of them come nowhere near me. And after that, I fought one of them at school. I beat his ass at school. <laughs> yeah, I beat his ass at school. One of them. But do you know after that, they left me alone. The reason I brought that up is because it ties into the cult mentality and the cult effect. Gangs, people trying to intimidate you, people trying to you know, uh, uh, cause you emotional harm and trauma. You get that in the public school system a lot. So we are born to be trained by the public school system. They tell us to find a job. They don't teach us how to become wealthy. You notice they only tell people find a job, get your high school diploma. Then when you get your high school diploma, they change the rules of their fairy tale and their illusion. Then they'll tell you, oh, no, you have to go to college. You get a college degree to, to be an office manager. Like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, you have to have a college degree now to, to be a, a, an administrative assistant. So they started changing the rules. See, when boomers, I, I want to say boomers, or maybe even older. See, I'm a I'm more of a younger generation X slash millennial because I'm on the cusp. I'm on the cusp, you know, because I was born in 1979. So I'm kind of like on the cusp between X and millennial. And. Older generation X, Xers and boomers, they told me that people used to come around and give them an opportunity to get jobs in the government, civil service jobs. And then I remembered, I, I thought about something. All of those dudes, all of those dudes that were into criminal activity and stuff like that when I was in high school, a lot of them have government jobs now. And it's because of who they knew. They probably have connections to Masons and stuff like that who can give them the, who can give them the connections. That is why the Masonic order is in such disarray now because they have nothing but a bunch of thugs or whatever in that Masonic order and I don't care who don't like what I'm saying. Fuck you. Now. They changed the rules. But they don't teach you how to be wealthy. They teach you how to be a follower. They teach you how to be in a cult. They don't teach you how to go out and start your own business using your own creativity and your own voice. They have you thinking that you have to depend on the government and other people to give you a job. And even if you do depend on the government for certain things, you still have to go out and look for other means of income because whatever they give you is probably not even going to be enough for you to survive off of. So you still have to find something else and use something within you to create your own wealth and money so you will not be at the mercy of anyone. See, they don't teach you that. They don't teach you how to create wealth and businesses. They teach you how to be a follower. That is why, no disrespect, but that is why when I hear people say, I got, you know, 
a, 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 a government job making a, but you don't own the government. And when you retire, you're not even going to get a fraction of what you what you were making when you were working. See, I want to know how to have my own business. That's what I want to do. I want to be an entrepreneur. I don't care if I don't make a whole lot of money at, at first, but it's just the mindset of trying and doing something on your own to try to create something on your own so you won't be dependent emotionally and financially and spiritually and energetically on something or someone else in totality. Now, I know some things we do have to depend on. But to always have a backup plan, to always have multiple sources of income, they don't teach that. They teach you to be in a cult, to depend on people to let you down, to depend on people who are agentness, who have agent mentalities that will let you down, that will let you down and they will let you drown. And yes, I said that to Ryan because I can do that. I have talent. There are people who will let you drown and they will not throw you a life preserver. They will let you drown, literally. I remember when I did not have a lot of money and it was an issue for me to keep food in the house because I was living paycheck to paycheck. Sometimes I didn't have enough money to keep food throughout the month, you know, because I wasn't making a lot of money. And one time I only had a pack of chicken in my refrigerator. And that's how you know it is nothing but that good old hoodoo, that good old hoodoo and God that got me through that. And I don't mean the in the religious sense. I'm not talking about the religious God. I'm talking about the real God. The great mother. It was nothing but my hoodoo and the great mother God that got me through that. Because it was two weeks before I got my paycheck. Two weeks. And I only had a pack of chicken and some rice up in my cabinet. And one of my family members who had the means to help me, you know what she said to me? Do you got any butter and rice? Go in your cabinet and get, make you some rice and butter. Maybe that'll last you for two weeks. Now she will say, I never said that. Because when they're up under that, you know, mind control from their masters, whoever their masters may be, they forget the things that they do. They forget the rituals that they put their relatives up under. That's why I say family is a cult. Not for all, but for some. That's what she told me. I know people need people sometimes, <clears throat> but that is why you have to be self-sufficient in a lot of ways, because when one person starts acting up, you have to rely on yourself at, at all cost. But they don't teach you that. They teach you, go to school, get a job, and get married. See, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a rebel. I'm gay. <laughs> I like other men. Shit. I wasn't into no college. I did I did take some computer college courses. That's why I'm so good with the computer and stuff like that. I know how to dismantle a computer and replace the memory inside of it or the hard drive. I know how to do that. I, was that the hard I can't remember if it was the hard drive. Or did I add more memory? No, I know how to dismantle a computer and put more memory in it. I know how to do that. Yeah, it was the memory. 
I, I know how to program and do things like that. I'm good at I'm good at stuff like that because I went to school for that. But I didn't go to no long-term college, and I didn't do any of that. Because I knew that that was not for me. They put you up under so much pressure and so much work. Then you get in debt. And there's a big thing now about students wanting to not pay back their debt. Because they feel like it was a trap. It was a trap for some and for a lot of them to get those college loans. And then <clears throat> once you get them, you're indebted for life. I know doctors personally who are still paying off $250,000 worth of debt from college, from student loans. And you're telling me this ain't a cult and a trap to keep you in the cult and to keep you in the trap? So they tell you to, Get your diploma, go to school, get married. Then they tell you what type of person you should marry. Then they tell you who you should be attracted to. Even these Hollywood people are influencing what people should be attracted to. Social media influencers are influencing what people should be attracted to. Telling you not to like this type of person, not to like that type of person. And then they have the unmitigated goal to put Kim Kardashian in my show, American Horror Story, which she is horrible in. She is horrible. And I don't care who don't like it. She is horrible. She cannot act. Just on a side note. They should have brought back Lady Gaga. That would have been better. Lady Gaga would have been better in that role than some Kim Kardashian. They should have brought back my girl, Lady Gaga, because at least Lady Gaga has some presence with her. She may not be the best actress, but she was good in the hotel as the countess. And we got to look at this child. But that's a, that, I'm going on a rampage. I'm sorry. But it's social media influences, influences like her that tell people what they should like and what they shouldn't like. I see people talking, men talking about, I'm looking for Harley, my Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is a fictitious character. And suffice it to say, the woman behind the voice of Harley Quinn, she died not that long ago. That's a fictitious character. They have people wanting plastic fictitious characters. They don't want people with flaws. They want the disease of perfection. Because no human is perfect. You feel what I'm saying? But this is the cult mentality. This is the cult effect. From Hollywood to D.C., Sports arena, music industry, acting world, entertainment, politics, shadow government, all of it is a cult. And then they pull the average person into it as well. Go to school, get a job, don't work on yourself. And I mean, really work on yourself. Just be a follower in a cult. Just be a follower in a cult. Don't do any real work, inner work, inner childhood work, inner shadow work. So you can find your inner power. It may not bring you a whole lot of money, but it will bring you freedom. Because I don't have a whole lot of money. I have more than I did many years ago, but I don't have a whole lot of money. But one thing I do have is my freedom. And I have my integrity. And I have my own mind. And I don't have to follow anyone for anything. There are people that I admire, of course. You can always admire people from afar. But I have my own mind. 
And a, when you when you are a person with your own mind in this world that we live in, to, that we live in today, you are a dangerous person. To the establishment. They want cult-minded people. They want people who will follow. Just like I'm looking at this series called The, the Other Black Girl. And you can just see the culture in that show. Every And they have black women set up as followers. When black women were never followers, black women were strong, proud leaders. But the image that they're putting out now are of black women being followers, and that is not the true nature of black women. So a lot of people are up under the cult effect. Jim Jones was not lying when he said what he said before that mass. I'm not going to say what it was, but y'all know what I'm talking about. He wasn't lying. He said that the government was behind a lot of stuff. So it goes back to what I was saying. Who are these people that come to Hollywood and then they become celebrities and then they change their identities from Marilyn Monroe? She went from Nor she went from Norma Jean Daltrey. That's just one of her names. I think it was another name she had too. Norma Jean Daltrey to Marilyn Monroe. Joan Crawford went from Lucille Lesur. I'm sorry, she, Lu Joan Crawford. Her name was Lucille Lesur, and she went from Lucille Lesur to Joan Crawford. So who are these people? And it really makes you wonder, and I know I'm going, I know a lot of people may not recognize if you're younger, you don't recognize a lot of these names. I know people probably will know who Marilyn Monroe is. But it really makes you wonder, when you go back into the dark history of Hollywood, it really makes you wonder what really happened to Natalie Wood on that night in, no, in late November of 1981. There have been a lot of different conspiracy theories. People said Robert Wagner may have eliminated her. her that was her husband at the time, you know, or, you know, but we really don't know. We really don't know. Was she, did he really? Because a lot of people claim that he's the one that eliminated her. But what if he wasn't? And I'm no, I'm, I'm no Robert Wagner fan. I'm just saying. It really makes you question. Here's another thing. Is she really dead? Because there's a lot of indication that a lot of these people, they fake their deaths for this very reason to get out of that cult that is ran by central intelligence, allegedly. I'm going to say allegedly ran by the CIA. Because people swear up and down that Elvis is still alive. And I know that sounds kind of cliche-ish. They said the same thing about Tupac, that he was still alive. Again, allegedly, I'm not saying it's true. Actually, I think Tupac is really dead. I saw, they, 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 I think he's really dead. But a lot of people say Elvis is still alive. They say that Jim Morrison is still alive, that these people faked their deaths. And it just made me wonder about Natalie Wood. Did Natalie Wood really fake her death? Did she really fake her death? Because she was afraid of dark water, deathly afraid of dark water. She had a phobia of it. So why would she try to take a small boat onto land in the middle of the night 
in dark waters off of the coast of Catalina. Why would she do that if she was deathly afraid of dark water? You know, I remember when I was looking at, you know, the movie Death Becomes Her. I love that movie. And they give a lot of symbolic information in that movie. And remember, Meryl Streep, Goldie Hawn, and Bruce Willis and Isabella Rossellini play in that movie. And what's in, they, they were all brilliant in that movie. That movie was hilarious. But it was also like a dark comedy because it was about murder and greed and revenge. You know what I mean? And remember, Bruce Willis's character was, at first, he was with Goldie Hawn. But then Meryl Streep stole him from Goldie Hawn. She and Goldie Hawn were childhood friends that were always rivals with each other. You know? So in the movie, Meryl Streep goes and takes a potion that Isabella Rossellini gives her that will give her eternal life. Goldie Hawn had already taken the potion to give her eternal life. And it really gives you, let's just say, an alleged idea of really, of really what goes on in the shadows in that industry or in that world. They talked about the undead in that movie. They talked about the living dead in L.A. Is this what's really happening? They even had a scene where they all went to a, um, a ball that Isabella Rossellini, Lisa, the woman who gave out the potion for eternal life, they went to a ball that she had where there were people there that were supposed to be dead. Elvis was one of them. Marilyn Monroe was there. There was even some indication that Greta Garbo faked her death. So what's really going on here? What's really happening in this world? It just makes you wonder. It really does. It makes you wonder what's really going on. Anyway, do I have anything else to say? No, I think that's it. Anyway, this is the occult view. I just thought I would come through and that's about it. Thank you.